Okay, we're talking about derivatives of power functions, and we just got through the power rule. If f of x is x to the n, and n could be any number, then the derivative of f of x is n times x to the power of n minus 1. And this makes derivatives of functions in this form really quick and easy. So for example, if you were told that f of x is equal to x to the fifth, and you had to find the derivative. Well, f prime would simply be 5 times x to the fourth. You take your exponent here, which in this case is a 5, and just bring it out front as a constant multiplier, and then reduce the exponent by 1, so the 5 becomes a 4. And it's that simple every single time. If f of x is x to the eighth, then f prime of x is equal to 8x to the seventh. And it's as simple as that. Now this will become really useful for doing other problems quickly and easily, but I want to go over a little bit about some terminology and some notation for just a second. Here's an important term you should know. The process of finding a derivative is called differentiation. It's an I, differentiation. So finding the derivative function is differentiating the function. When you differentiate a function, you find the derivative, which is also a function. So you need to think of differentiation as an operation that gets done on functions. Just like you can take a number, like the number 25, and you can do something to that number. For example, you can square root it. You can think of the square root as an operation that's done to a number. Think of taking a function and differentiating it to get another function. Just like you square root a number and you get another number, you can differentiate a function and you get another function. So differentiation is a mathematical operation that gets done on functions. Now we've seen some of this notation before. Instead of the f primed notation, we often see this notation too, dy over dx. So if y is a function of x, then dy over dx is the same thing as y primed, the derivative of the function. And you can think of this d dx as the operator. Okay, that means take the derivative of the function. And specifically we say the derivative with respect to x. And that means x is the independent variable. x is the variable that goes into this function, the input value for the function. And we're taking the derivative of the function with respect to x. And sometimes this little symbol is used that way as an operator. For example, if your function was this, if your function was y equals 3x squared plus 5x, then you could refer to the derivative of that function like this. You could say d by dx of 3x squared plus 5x. So this means take the derivative of what comes after it. You've seen notation similar to this. In trigonometry you do things like this. You might say the sine of x plus pi over 2. Okay, What that means is take the sine of this stuff in parentheses here. Just more simply sine of x. Think of the sine as something that gets done to this this thing right here. Well here we think of differentiation as something getting done to this function. The d differentiation is an operation that gets performed on functions. Now with all that in mind we're going to expand our rules for differentiation a little bit. We just talked about taking the derivative of a power function. Now in coming lessons we're going to see about how to take the derivatives of sums and products and quotients, the derivatives of trig functions, the derivatives of exponential functions, the derivatives of composite functions, implicit functions, parametric functions, all different types of functions. And we'll start off with some simple ones. But with these ideas in mind let's first talk about the derivative of a sum. By the derivative of a sum, we just mean the sum of two functions. If you're taking the derivative, that's something you're doing to a function. So the derivative of a sum is the sum of two functions. So in other words, we're talking about this. The derivative with respect to x of f of x plus g of x. 
Okay, two functions added together. How do we take the derivative of that? Well, I'm going to apply our definition of derivative to this thing right here. And we'll get a, a general answer for the derivative of a sum. And it will be something that will strike you as fairly intuitive. So how do we do the derivative of a sum? Well, we can always apply the definition of a derivative. The limit as delta x approaches 0 of, okay, we're going to do x plus delta x plugged into this. So that's going to be f of x plus delta x plus g of x plus delta x minus simply x plugged in here. So it's going to be minus f of x plus g of x. And all of that is going to be over delta x. Now I'm going to deal with this just by rearranging these pieces. I have four terms here and I'm just going to rearrange them a little bit. So I have the limit as delta x approaches 0 and I'm going to have f of x plus delta x and then I'm going to put this minus f of x beside it. And then I'm going to write the plus g of x plus delta x. That was that term. And then I'll put this minus g of x here. This minus sign distributes over here. So that's really a minus g of x over there. So I have minus g of x and all of that is over delta x. Now I can break this up into two fractions. I'm going to break it up right here at that plus sign. And limits, you might remember, distribute across addition. The limit of a sum is equal to the sum of the limits. That goes back to the limit theorems we discussed back in chapter 2. So this can be written as the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x plus, and I'll distribute this limit over here to all of this stuff, the limit as delta x approaches 0 of g of x plus delta x minus g of x over delta x. And you should be able to see that this is simply f primed, the derivative of f. And this is simply g primed, the derivative of g. So this is f primed of x plus g primed of f, x. So in other words, the derivative of f plus g is simply the derivative of f plus the derivative of g. And like I said, that should strike you as fairly intuitive. But it's not only intuitive, it's known to be correct because this is proof. Because limits distribute across addition, so does differentiation. With that in mind, you should be able to very quickly solve a problem like this. If f of x is x to the fifth plus x cubed plus x squared, and you're told to find f prime of x, well, that's simply going to be the derivative of this term plus the derivative of this term plus the derivative of this term. Because we can think of each of those terms as a function. So this is the sum of three functions. So f prime of x is going to be the derivative of x to the fifth, which is 5x to the fourth, plus the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared, plus the derivative of x squared, which is 2x to the first, or simply 2x. So the derivative of the sum of two or more functions is pretty easy. We just take the derivative of each piece.